Okay, so for this, I wanted to read over this article for Monster Hunter. I don't mind spoilers for this game as much as Shadow of the Earth Tree, you know what I mean? Well, the I guess like game mechanics and stuff like that. I guess I wouldn't necessarily consider that spoilers unless it's like monsters or whatever in, in which like you would encounter. Capcom might ended up charging $70 for Monster Hunter WoW just like it did with Dragon's Dogma 2 early this year, but if you don't like that, the publisher said just wait until it slashes the prices down to 10 or $5 after about 5 Just say no what it's like just wait just wait five years or so before you decide to play the game no <laughs> you're trying to play this shit like day one or like you know within like a couple months or so you know what i mean let's say to wait like about five years <laughs> Let's see, Monster Hunter Wild launches in 2025 for PC, PS5, and Xbox Series X and S. And y'all already know there's going to be crossplay in this game, which I'm really looking forward to. Yeah, I'm looking forward to Monster Hunter. One of my favorite series. It isn't always like new player friendly. I feel like Monster Hunter is one of those series where it helps if you know somebody, like you have a friend to kind of show you the ropes or like, you know, people in the community and stuff that are pretty nice and, you know, they're willing to like, like help new players out and kind of show them the ropes. Uh, it says, I play Monster Hunter World for 500 hours. Yeah, my, I think my hours for Monster Hunter World is up there as well. Now that I've seen Monster Hunter Wild up close, here are 13 changes I'm most excited about. There was a 30 minute hands off Monster Hunter Wild demo at Summer Game Fest, it showed me exactly what I was hoping to see. Monster Hunter used a launch pad for something bigger, more seamless, and more imaginative. Rough edges like Ice Wound's cumbersome clutch claw. Bro, I didn't know how many people didn't like the freaking clutch claw. I know they introduced that in Iceborne. I was like, really? I I had a much easier time when I would play Monster Hunter World on controller with using the Clutch Claw, but then having to relearn how to play it again on PC, though not good at it, with like pulling it off because it's when you have that opening on a monster. So number one, wounding a monster is a lot easier now. One of my favorite mechanics in Monster Hunter Rise Endgame was how you could deal extra damage to afflicted monsters by damaging glowing body parts until they detonate. This wasn't enough to fully offset the Blight massive HP inflation, but I thought the pinpoint targeting itself was a fun addition to the rhythm of a fight. Monster Hunter Wild has a similar mechanic loosely spliced with Icewind's Clutch Claw. Wounds would naturally appear on a monster as you fight them, marked by the red scout flies gathering on specific body parts. And if you do enough damage to those wounds, you'll get a similar shot of bonus damage. It kind of reminds me of um, what they're describing with like the marked by the red scout flies. If you guys are familiar with the insect glaive at all, an area on a monster, it's the same way. You send your kinsec out, you know, towards that location or the different buffs that it offers. I, it looks similar to that. Uh, what up, Jen? What up, man? So I thought the clutch call was cool, but I didn't like the idea of using it to tenderize. I feel you. Yeah, and then, like, if you fought, like, the freaking dragon, uh, Safi, not Safajiva, yeah, Safi. I remember that, yeah, they definitely wanted you to freaking tenderize just to... Um, two, focus mode lets you focus on fighting the monster and not the camera. I wasn't totally sure what focus mode, a new stance available to all weapon really is, so I asked director Yuyu Tokuda about it. It's not a lock on camera setting, he explained, but rather a way set your angle related to the monster more easily than you could before. This makes it easier to stay focused on attacking or defending and ensures that your moves are going to be connecting properly. There are no limits on focus mode either. It's not tied to a resource like stamina, so you can use it as much as you want. Speaking of which, every monster has at least one new attack. Do y'all think that they're going to have new weapons? Because like in Monster Hunter, I think it was in, and in Monster Hunter, I believe 4, they introduced the insect blade as well as the charge blade. So I'm wondering if there's a possibility that we would get new weapons i am if they if we don't i i i can't complain at least we get new moves but <laughs> what else like my new blindfold plate they finna go crazy with the new character <laughs> I saw a few normal weapon animations that look new to me, but I still need to see a little more here before committing to specifics. I know for a fact that every weapon has at least one new attack. Focus mode comes with an exclusive attack that deals extra damage when you use it to break a wound. You can pop up wounds with normal attacks too, but it seems like you deal less damage. The great swords move seem to be a counter stance that leads into a running charge of some kind, and the long sword seems to have an alternate spirit combo, but I don't want to read too much into the animation just yet. 
still new moves for all 14 weapon good news yeah he said what we yapping about monster hunter walls man i'm excited for it. it it's gonna be nice because you know we finally have cross play for this game i've been wanting for a hot hot minute you know it'd be nice to finally be able to play with people on like different platforms um and then npc hunters are back the star of our demo used the great sword long sword and heavy bow gun but i got a brief glimpse at several other weapons including my beloved lance and hammer thanks to three npc hunters who answer an sos flare remember how monster hunter rise that you go on hunt with loads of story characters well i don't know if wow also lets you pal around with story character it does let you call in some npc cavalry if you want some help and don't have any friends online that's cool for people that like enjoy this game but maybe they're struggling or have that extra hand there. Bringing two weapon is no gimmick. Oh yeah, that's a new thing too, right? This is pretty fucking cool to be able to carry two weapons with you. For those of y'all that have played Monster Hunter, what games, I mean, what games, <laughs> what weapons do you guys plan on carrying? I think for me, it would be Greatsword and Insect Glaive. Those are the two weapons I fucking love running. I, I started off as a hammer main, um, but then since then I've branched out and tried you know all the different weapons and i really love the glaive a uh, charge blade as well actually when we first learned that you can swap to a second weapon out in the field by slashing it in the pouch of your secret mount which is these guys secret 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 is it secret secret mount my first idea was using one weapon to apply poison and then swapping weapon once the monster was poisoned you could do something similar with blast or paralysis weapon oh right oh yeah paralysis go crazy i love like um the status ailments you can inflict on on the monsters swapping to a stronger raw damage weapon once the monster's resistance has gone up after a few status triggers you could also bring two of the same weapon but with different elements on multi-monster hunt to target weaknesses but takuda seems to be teasing something more. I can't go into much detail just yet because we have a campaign ahead of us to reveal more gameplay details, he said. But I would say that as the story progresses, player will be able to gain access to skills or features that will be tied into this new system of using two different weapons at the same time. As what exactly that means, watch this space, we just started revealing information. Mmm, interesting. I wonder too, like not only just that, I wonder if they're going to make, you know how in Monster Hunter World, how you have like like bounties and stuff nowadays too that you can pick up or an extra extra zennies extra um items or consumables you can use i wonder if they're going to have bounties or quests basically that's kind of tied into that where okay go out and use a long sword and a great sword just pair it up with like different combos or something and then this is another awesome thing quests are seamless now when our demo player finished a hunt after felling the bear like a uh, doshaguma they didn't get yanked out of the era you can just stay in the world if you want and find more things to hunt even more excitingly we didn't see a begin quest prompt until we actually attacked the monster which suggests to me that the quest timer doesn't start ticking the second you enter an area anymore everything seems more freedom from how you start to quest to how you end them and this could be a godsend for monster hunters speed running by potentially preventing the need to reset for a good spawn location bro that is so nice because you know sometimes you know, you still, after you're done hunting a monster, you still, it'd be nice to just skip having to deal with the reward screen and all that, heading back to headquarters and then picking another quest to go out. Now, apparently, I watched the video, Oscar, that you dropped from Maximilian Dude, and he said that, like, you can just ring up a map and everything, too, and then bring up a menu screen where you can see the rest of the quests and everything instead of having to head back to whatever base is. That's, like, really nice. You can build temporary temporary camps and monsters can destroy them now this right here makes me think of freaking dragon's dogma man like the fact that you can set up camp and then they can just like come along and just freaking destroy that shit things are so freeform in fact that you're not tied to normal encampments you still have key bases but you can also spend research points to plop down a temporary camp and many locations too and from what i could tell do basically anything you want to do at other base this is another nice time saver the fact that 
the monsters can destroy your temporary camp while you're away sells the immersive hunting simulator side of the game. Yeah, that's gonna be, <laughs> that's gonna be interesting. I think the other thing too, I'm, I'm wondering since they have like a demo for people on the show floor, when do y'all think they're gonna give us a demo to actually play for Monster Hunter Wild? I'm thinking it might be like, like months down the line. We could see one. If we do get one anytime soon, I'll be surprised. He said, I told y'all Dragon's Dogma 2 is a tech demo for Wild. Um, let's see. Maps are twice the size of the previous games. If you like exploring, manipulating the environment in Monster Hunter, you're in for a treat with Wild. A Capcom spokesperson said the maps in Wilds are little more than twice the size of the previous game, and it was clear from the UI that tons of large monsters can pop up at once too. Oh yeah, that was another thing. Like you can run into a pack of not only like the little monsters, but also like the big ones that you would fight. Imagine running into like a pack of freaking Nargakuga or something like that. Oh hell no, man. Those motherfuckers are fast leaping across the screen at you. like. Uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it, man. I can't wait. I, I know some people aren't obviously a fan of Monster Hunter World, but I love World because of how immersive it was from the trailers and whatnot that they're kind of going with a similar route. Well, for Wild, I can't complain. I love it. Maps goes through a phase of abundance, rich with free healing. Bigger maps mean more stun bugs, ensnaring vines, sand pit, boulder traps, and other environmental tricks to the advantage to take advantage of while hunting. You can also expect to cash in on some free healing, vigor wasp, and so on during phases of abundance that kick in while you're hunting or gathering that seems to trigger at random. Oh, also too, when you're on your secret, it's nice that you're able to still gather and pick up items too while still on your mount. Like I've said before, it's always annoying when games do have mount, but they make you dismount before you can pick things up. So it will be nice, but I'd imagine if it's like, um, if it's like mining or something, I don't think you, you can probably be on your secret in order to mine like ore nodes you probably have to hop off of it. We'll have to see. And it says, dynamic weather is not messing around. I feel like the idea of dynamic weather gets thrown around a lot in games, but rarely has any impact beyond wind in your hair and clouds in the sky. So my ears perked up when I heard that the lighting, lightning charge flying wyvern shown in the previous trailer, which is the apex predator of the windward plains map where we were shown, will only spawn naturally during a thunderstorm. Other weather anomalies can also change what monsters are found in the area and monsters may even get struck by lightning, which is a nice touch. So yeah, I'm glad that they made it to where like when the lightning, it's not just like us as players that can get hit, even the monsters can can get damaged by it as well too. Let's go. You said, I don't know, dynamic weather was annoying in Ace Combat 7 Hill Divers 2. Weather seems to be the next gen feature I'm here for it. I can already see motherfuckers getting clipped by the lightning strike and failing a hunt. Oh man. Like, let's be real. I've, I've definitely had hunts where uh, I'm fatalist, man. Nothing like going against that fucking damn dragon and like double carding. Like when you play with randoms and you're double carding, I already already feel but I'm like damn fucking ass but then but then if you fucking triple cart yeah that's the worst especially when I first started playing monster hunter man and damn shame just the walk of shame or or the cart of shame rather <laughs> you said I quadruple cart bro it fucking happens man it happens when you're new like yeah because you're still learning the mechanics there's a lot of ins and outs to monster hunter so Remember to be kind to yourself, y'all. Um, mantles are back. I don't know how many mantles are back, but I saw the ghillie mantle in action, which is exciting. Some of the mantles in Monster Hunter World were a little game warping, but I like the idea of having more equipment to pack when you go out for a hunt. And cooldowns based mantles are a solid enough system I'm happy to see return. How do you guys feel about mantles? Um, I guess I personally feel indifferent to it. Like, they're nice. They're there. I'll obviously use them. Okay. Hey, wait, sneak attacks? Yes, I like this. All right, sneak attacks are kind of good. The Gilly Mantle ends up being pretty powerful offensively too, because it lets our hunter easily sneak right up to Doshaguma to deliver a proper button prompt. Sneak attack to jumpstart the hunt. Oh, interesting. So yeah, that's new. With a burst of damage, here are some quick numbers. Bearing in mind that this seems like a low, low level stuff and it's all subject to change, a charge great sword swing deals about 234 damage and a sneak attack hit for 522. That's damn near double. And 
An attack from the aforementioned Apex Lightning Wyvern deals 3,836. 3, oh, man. I, I like it. I like the sneak attacks, man. Nice. Okay, 13. Mounting is back to normal and seems really strong. I'm glad to hear that this is being brought back to. I like mounting a monster and, like, to be able to topple it and then just, you know, go in and wail on it. I enjoy the wyvern riding in Monster Hunter Rise, but after puppeteering my 300th monster, I started to miss the simple act of climbing onto my quarry and stabbing up until they could be down for some free damage. Meanwhile, in one 15 minute uh, Doshaguma hunt, our hunter managed to get three mounts in with a freaking great sword. Not the most agile or airborne of weapons for sure. Yeah, like it, it takes a lot of effort to fucking get a mount in with the fucking great sword like the first one's always the easiest but then like once you try to get like a second or third one it takes a lot more hits before you can the iconic monster hunter 4 mounting mini game is sadly a thing of the past but mounting is back and seems very powerful especially in multiplayer oh yeah and the thing too like if y'all remember in uh monster hunter what is that monster hunter 4 when they introduced the mounting of that game bro it would suck but like if you've been playing the game for a minute and you fuck up the mount oh my god just miss out on some free damage of getting them knocked down you can like set up you know there's this whole like a bunch of different tactics let me let me not but yeah i'm looking forward to monster hunter man by far this is up here for one of my most favorite uh beloved series of all time uh for sure big monster hunter fan here dying as cocaine you better not leave though yeah that man was expensive right right when you cut it's like damn you're cutting to our paychecks man you said sneaking oh right oscar yeah you know everyone's setting up fucking explosive barrels the mega barrel bombs oh my god i can only imagine the fucking damage sneaking up like that everyone with ghillie mantles the maximum amount of barrel bombs you can bring 